Welcome to another Scratch lesson. In this lesson, we will learn how to draw different shapes in Scratch. First, what is a coordinate system? Coordinate system uses one or more numbers or coordinates to uniquely determine the position or location of points in space. So the points are designated by their distance along the horizontal, which is also referred to as the x-axis, and then the vertical, which is known as the y-axis. The origin is located at 0 and 0. First 0 is the x-axis, and then the second 0 is the y-axis. So using this coordinate system, you can determine the position or the location of any points in space. For example, if you want to determine the location of this point, first you have to consider the x-axis, which is negative 4, and then y-axis, which is a positive 4. And then when you combine together, value of x is equal to negative 4 and value of y is equal to positive 4. So using that coordinate system, you can determine the position of this particular point. Similarly, if you want to locate the position of this particular point, first you have to check the x-axis. The x-axis is equal to negative 3. Y-axis is also negative 3. So if you combine together negative 3, y, negative 3 determines the position of this particular point. So how does coordinate system work in Scratch? So if you look at this image towards the right hand side, you will notice similar grid here in Scratch as well. So the origin is located here. This is the horizontal axis or the x-axis and then this is the vertical axis which is also known as the y-axis. And then if you look at the value here, so the value of y here is negative 180 and then value of y here is equal to positive 180 so from here 0 till here is 180 and then from here till here is 180 so if you combine these two values together it is exactly equal to 360 pixels which means the window or the stage of the scratch is exactly 360 pixels in height so similarly if you look at the horizontal axis so from here origin towards the left hand side the value of x is called to negative 240 and then towards the right hand side is 240 so till here is 240 and then from here till here is exactly 240 so if you combine these two values together it is exactly equal to 480 pixels wide so what you have to know from here is that the size of the stage is exactly equal to 480 pixels wide and then 360 pixels high. In Scratch, by default, the sprite is placed right at the center or the origin. If you look at the value of x here, the value of x is equal to 0 and value of y is equal to 0. But if you want to see the grid, you can open it by clicking on this button. From here, if you scroll down, then you will see a grid xy grid so you can select it by clicking on this particular backdrop and then you will notice that this sprite is placed right at the center of this particular grid so if i move this particular sprite down you will notice that the value of x is equal to 4 and then value of y is equal to negative 61 so if you move down the value of y decreases if you go up then value of y will increase so similarly, if you move towards the right hand side, the value of x will increase. If you look at here, value of x is equal to 136. Then if you move towards the left hand side, the value of x will decrease. So if you look at here, value of x becomes 1 negative 118. So similarly, if you want to see the value of x and y, you can simply go here to this position. If you look at this block, you will see that x is equal to negative 118 and y is equal to negative 2 so similarly here go to block as well value of x is equal to negative 18 and then y is negative 2 so simply if you move this somewhere here then the value of x and y will also change here in this block as well as here x and y has to change so therefore by using different coordinates in scratch you can move sprite anywhere you want 
So in Scratch, we use this x and y value in a block called as the go to block and then the glide block. Let's say our sprite is initially at the origin which is equal to 0 and 0. And then let's say if I want to move my sprite to somewhere at 100 and 100 here. So I can simply type here 100 value well of x is equal to 100 and value well of y is equal to 100. So if I click here, my sprite directly jumps to this coordinate 100 and 100. Even if this sprite is somewhere here at the bottom, if you click on this go to block, it will instantly move to this 100 and 100. So it doesn't matter where your sprite is, if you click on this block, it will directly jump to coordinate x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 100. So similarly, let's say if you want to use the glide block, and then similarly, if I want to move to x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 100, and let me drag this sprite somewhere here and then click on this glide block. So it's going to glide from position, any position to that particular position specified by gliding one second. If you look at here, it's going to take exactly one second to travel from the initial position to the specified position. For example, if you want to move from here till to x is equal to 100 and y 100, if you click here, so it will jump, it will glide from initial position to the specified position in exactly one second so you can specify two seconds as well but if you want to see exactly like the go to block you can specify this time as zero it's going to directly jump from any position to that particular specified position in zero seconds so it's going to behave exactly like the go to block so if you click here it will instantly jump to that particular position Using this two block, we can create different shapes and or you can move this sprite to any position in a stage. So let's say first I want to move to x is equal to 100 and then y is equal to 100, which means this sprite will move to this position. So after that, let's say I'm going to move to this position which has the value negative 100 and then y is equal to positive 100. So I will just right click over here, duplicate it. And then value of x is equal to negative 100 so from here this sprite is going to move here so if i click here it's going to move here so from here let's say i'm going to move down till here which has the value of x as negative 100 and then value of y is equal to negative 100 so i'll just duplicate it here and then place it here so value of x is equal to negative 100 value of y is also negative 100 so if i click here once again it's going to move down right here so from here, I'm going to go towards this position, which has the value of x as positive 100 and the value of y as negative 100. So value of x is equal to exactly positive 100 and then value of y is negative 100. So if I click here, it's going to go towards the left hand side. So finally, if I want to go back to the original position or the initial position, which is here, so I can also I can specify here as 100 and 100. So let's see what happens when I click on the block here. So when I click on this block, so it's moving to 100 and 100. So if I click on this block once again, you're not going to see any effect here. Even though I'm moving from here to here and then here and then here and then going to the original position. But here I'm not seeing any effect here. Why is it? Because the go to block, like I mentioned, is going to instantly jump to the position. So, which means the initial position is here. So, from here, this sprite jumps to this position, to this position, to this position, and to the original position instantly. So, therefore, you will not be able to see the impact at all. So, if you want to see the effect, you can use the delay called wait one second so here you can put when one second right after or right before going to the next position and then you can put this wait one second in between every block of code before moving to the next position i just want to wait for one second and then if i click on this block now you will see the effect here so it's going to the next position next next and the original position after waiting for one second now Let's say if you want to draw shapes in Scratch, 
then I will have to use another block called as the pin block. So in order to use the pin block, you can click on this add extension button here. So from here, I'm going to use the block called as the pin block. So you can click here and then now my pin block is here, right here. So I can use these blocks, which is related to pin. The first one is erase all. So this erase all block will be important later because if you want to draw something here, after after drawing something here, then you may have to erase it before drawing the next shape, which is going to be essential later. Then we have stamp, which we will discuss later. Here we will learn these two block, the pin down and pin up. So pin down, like the name suggests, is going to draw something on the screen. And then if you do not want to draw, then you will have to use pin up. You're going to lift the pin up. So, but in this lesson, we will learn what is pin down. So, which means if I put a pin down right on the top, and then if I click on this pin down button, this time you will see the pin down, and then it's going to leave the thread. It's going to draw something on the stage. So that's how you can draw a simple shape in Scratch. So the final step is let me add this green flag as well, and then now if i click on this green flag here so it's going to draw a shape but if you look at here the shape that has been drawn already is still there and then when i click on this green flag it's drawing over the shape which has already be been drawn so that is something that i may want to improve on so therefore this time i'm going to use the block call as the erase all block so when you click on the green flag button then i'm going to erase everything that is drawn on the screen already in this case i have drawn this square shape already i do not want to keep on drawing on top of the square which is already been drawn so therefore as soon as you click on the green flag i'm going to erase everything that is drawn there so right after that now i'm going to start drawing by using the block call as pin down so when I click on this green flag now, now it's going to remove everything, see? And then it's going to start drawing a shape. So therefore, erase all is also very important. Now the next thing is, let's look at how glide works. So let me erase everything that is drawn on the screen by clicking on this erase all button. And then if you click on this one, it's going to move to 100 and 100. So let me draw a different shape this time instead of just drawing this square let me draw a triangle somewhere like this so right after going here i'm going to go to this position which is x is equal to zero and y is equal to negative 100 so therefore i will just duplicate this one x is equal to zero and y is equal to negative 100 so when i click here so you will notice that it's going to keep on drawing because we have already used this pin down block so therefore you don't have to use it separately here like this but we'll learn how to solve that problem later as well so after going here i'm going to go to this particular location so if you look at here next one i'm going to go to this position which is negative 100 and x is equal to 200 so duplicate this one 200 and the value of y is equal to negative 100 so it's going to move to this position so that's the problem here at the moment and if i keep it somewhere here and then when i click on this one it's going to draw from here so therefore in that case i will use this pen up button so i'll show you how we can do that later so finally let's move from negative 100 to positive 100 100 and 100 so now when i click here it's going to draw a triangle here so let me erase it all and then click once again here so you will notice that it's drawing negative 100 and then it's going to draw a triangle here so therefore here as well you can choose to include these two things first i'm going to use pen down here and then I'm going to first erase all and then I'm going to also create this so green flag button here so now if you click on this green flag button it's going to draw two things together because I have 
created an event for this one this program as well as this one and then when i click on this green flag button it's going to run this program as well as this program so let's see what happens here so at the moment if you look at it i have created a program to draw a score and then also i have created the program to draw a triangle so if you click on this green flag both this program are being executed so therefore when i click here let's see what's happening here again it's trying to draw a score as well as shapes and then it's going to create a conflict here so therefore if you want to run it separately let's say i'm going to click on this one first so it's going to create a triangle and then if you want to run this one separately then it's going to create a square So how do we use Panda block in Scratch? So for that, I will remove this one because I do not need this one. This code, you can simply drag it and then drop it here to remove it. So here, let me make use of this Panda block. So for example, let's say at the moment, if I take this one here and then if I click on this green flag button, it's going to start drawing from here and then it's going to create a shape here, which is what I may not want for my project. So in such case, when I move from here till here, then I want to use the pen and block. For example, if I want to, if I drag this right here and then click on the green flag button, it's going to start drawing from here itself, which I will not want for my project. So therefore, in such case, I will use the pen and block. So right here, so when this particular sprite glides to x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 100, there I will use the block called as panda block. So no matter where your sprite is, when it moves to 100 and 100, I'm not going to draw it. Instead, I'm going to lift the pen. So therefore, I'm using the panda block here. So now let's say from here it's going to go to negative 100, pos sorry, positive 100 and positive 100. So after reaching here, now I'm going to start drawing. So now I'm going to use pen up, pen down block here, and then when I click on this button, no matter where your sprite is, it's going to go to x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 100 without drawing. So therefore, in this case, so it's going to go here, and then after that only, it's going to start drawing it. So therefore, if I combine all this code together and then run this code, first it's going to erase everything. So I will show you by keeping this sprite here. And then it's going to go to that position without drawing. So right after reaching here, it's going to start drawing shapes. So this is how you can draw different shapes in Scratch. You can either use go to block or glide block to move sprite from one position to another. Or if you want to draw something, you can use these two blocks. Of course, we will learn to draw different shapes using other blocks as well in the later lessons.